What's happening in the House is fascinating, it seems to me, for multiple reasons. Because for the first time in my recollection, progressives have basically said, we're willing, we're not taking the half sandwich or the quarter sandwich. I mean, I remember Harry Reid saying at one point, like, don't let, you know, take the half sandwich. Don't <laughs> let the, the, the good be the enemy of the perfect. I think they basically said, like, you know what? This is not good. And right. we're, we are going to let the, what you call good be the enemy of what we think is even less than perfect. Uh, and we're going to we will sink this. And the, at least Nancy Pelosi believes him because they she won't bring it up for a vote. I mean, or hasn't yet. What, what, give me your sense of like what mm -hmm. what happens next, but what are also the implications of the progressives finally doing that? Well, they you're right. Pelosi has to listen to them now. You had Josh Gottheimer on CNN yesterday saying that he was 1,000% certain that this bill would pass, that it would go to the floor and that it would pass, uh, which shows, and in some ways you can't blame him because if you, nobody had, has ever lost money, you know, betting against progressives. And so, but for the first time, they, he, he would have lost money if he'd have put it, if he'd have put it down there. Uh, part of it, like you said, is that they don't, there's some good things in this bipartisan infrastructure bill, but it's not obvious that on the whole, it's a good thing when you factor in the way that it, uh, you know, injects more money into the fossil fuel infrastructure, you know, at the expense of clean energy. And so it progressives are able to justify voting it down in a way beyond just, we wanted more to be able to say, actually, this is bad. So if you want us to vote for something that is either neutral or maybe bad, then you have to give us something good to pair with it. Uh, the, the slogan in, in the early days was, you know, no climate, no bill or whatever. Um, and so now, and, and, that, but that, and that's still the case, like the climate provisions are mostly all in the reconciliation package. So they're saying, if you want this bricks and mortar, these roads and bridges, you want all this money for your gas guzzling buses, you have to also give us this, this climate money. They, I don't feel like there was enough of that work, although it, obviously it was enough for them, but it didn't feel mm -hmm. like there was a lot of like tilling of that ground over the past, you know, month or two. It was, well, I think that they were, I think their, their thinking was if we can do this internally, do this work internally, that's enough because we don't, we also don't want to sour the public attitude toward this bill that we're ultimately going to pass and going and to run on, and, and go right. on run on in the and, and trump it okay i see yeah. yes because and because it, because to pass let's say 400 uh, uh, i mean 4 trillion dollars worth of new spending over the course of 10 years just to remind people of that um uh, is um is a good thing uh, you know uh, for uh, some of that is some of that stuff is going to get good on balance that that 500 uh, uh, billion of new money over the course of 10 years maybe both insufficient in some areas, not deployed in the way you want it to be, but there's still money in there that you could sort of like couple in the bundle of all of it right. and, and uh, promote. And there's, you know, there's broadband and, you know, there's, there's unquestionably like good things tucked in that thing as well, tucked in that 500 billion. Well, I just wanted to ask you too, when we're, while we're still talking about the CPC, um, how much do you think that Jayapal being, like basically the sole leader in this area and the power being consolidated one. I mean, it's helpful that there are more members of the squad, but to me, it, I, I I've never seen it. The CPC wield their power in a way that is this like streamlined and effective. And I think you can credit Jaya Paul's leadership, but I'm curious about what your sense of it is. But I, I think it helped tactically because they can move faster. Um, yeah. And, you know, both Pocan and Jayapal would say in the past, just because they're so busy, they're doing a million different things that would take like six hours to get both offices to sign off on a statement. And by then, you know, everybody's moved on. Uh, so, you know, they, they, they're able to move faster and, and be, be more nimble. But I think structurally, there's a lot more going on than just, than just that. Like, I think if you went back in 2009 
and said, it's not going to be co-chair Lynn Woolsey and Raul Grijalva. It's, it's going to be just chair Raul Grijalva. But you don't get a much better outcome um, for, uh, for all of the structural reasons that have changed since then. The, and by, by structural reasons, I mean, do, is it your sense, like, this feels to me um, the beginnings of the Congressional Progressive Caucus basically starting to um, to show the outlines of the contours of what they're going to expect out of their caucus. Because it, it, it's always been like, I want to brand myself as a progressive okay, you're branding yourself as a progressive increases the value of our brand. So that's fine. You don't have to do anything. Uh, right. You don't have to, right. you don't even have to take any right. positions that agree with us. You can just like make it seem like we're powerful, but it feels like in this situation, right? That we're getting a sense that there's at least 50, but around 50, about half of the, the, the caucus seems to be the ones who are committed for the most part. Right. I mean, this is a pretty slam dunk mm -hmm. to get all of the people in the Congressional Progressive Caucus to sign on, it seems to me. Um, they had some people outside of the caucus who were, who were, who were saying, we're not going to vote for it, too, which I mm -hmm. think was very helpful. That was. Um, what is your sense of that process that's going on there? The, the big shift and on, and on the structural side it, it was the, the alignment of so many swing swing seat Democrats with with progressive Democrats, you know, back in 06, 08, 09, the, a lot of the swing seat de Democrats were in rural areas that were trending more Republican and wanted to do less. They didn't want to do the climate bill. They didn't want to do Obamacare. The ones who voted for it, you know, voted for it, believing that it was a political loser, but it was their duty as a Democrat to vote for it. Whereas this time around, you have a bunch of people like Angie Craig, Katie Porter, Johanna Hayes, um, Susan Wilde in Allentown, like who, who have been making the argument, uh, uh, Mike Levin, California, that we need this for reelection. Like actually like doing something is actually politically good and beneficial. And, and so it was that, that alignment of those interests that gave, gave progressives so much cover because in the past, they'd say, hey, by you forcing us to do all of this taxing and spending, you're going to put our frontline members at risk and you're going to cost us our majority. How dare you? But instead, they were able to say, no, go ask the people who are running in these swing districts what they think. And you ask them and they're like, no, we need this. Like We need infrastructure. And Katie Porter's made this point. Infrastructure. Everybody likes infrastructure. That, that money's not going out the door for years. But if we do the child tax credit, if we do childcare subsidies, like we can run on that. We can point to your pocket and be like that, that you have that because, because we gave it to you. And, and, and really on some level, it's going to look like you lost that because we didn't do anything. Right. Oh, because yes. they it, have it right now. I mean, it's in going January, January. In January, the Democrats will be responsible for doubling child poverty. Yep. If they don't do anything, folks, there's more of what you've just saw where that came from. That's if you hit the subscribe and like button. Thank you. Really? Thank you.